On network television, something happened to me, and it kept happening night after night, and pretty soon it altered my life. I couldn't get off an, or on an airplane without somebody talking about it. Here's the, uh, as it wound down, uh, one of the last uh, incidents uh, on network television, uh, I have a tape of it for you now that I want to show you. Watch this. For months and months, we've had this uh, silly Phil Donahue countdown calendar. Here, take a look at it right here. It's right behind us. Isn't it? <clears throat> there it is. It's... And as you know, we're, we're all through with it, so now uh, we have to, to get rid of it. So we're going to give it away tonight. Let me give you some information about the uh, calendar. It's uh, 8 feet by eight, uh, 8 feet 9 inches. Uh, the material is canvas. The printing process is 3M Scanamural. I, I think that's obvious. Um, it was, uh, this was actually made in uh, California. The Scanamural process cost us 2100 bucks. The photo processing cost us 150 uh, Of course, we had to have it fireproof. That was another 75 <laughs> Uh, the air freight was $70, the trucking expense $66, shop costs $100, city sales tax $191.40, and the grand total is $2,677.40. What do you think? Now, uh, I, I, I'm grateful, and uh, more than a few folks are wondering how in the world you respond to something like this, and I'm happy to do it now. I'm pleased to introduce on our program the first... David Letterman, uh, David Letterman calendar, and here it is. Um, the photo cost us a nothing. The glue, the glue cost us nothing. The calendar, which is made of paper, is 89 cents. The tax is 7 cents for a grand total of 96 cents. And I am pleased to welcome now the man who makes everybody else famous, David Letterman. Right. a man who is succeeding uh, at a place where not everybody has enjoyed that experience. Late night, a very, very difficult time period. And in order to succeed in that time period, he has dropped watermelons off of buildings. You've had elevator races in this That's building, right. have you? Yeah. Uh, you've also interviewed uh, the chefs where famous people eat. Yeah, that's true. We've done that. You know, uh, let me tell you something. We, ha we were planning something, and this is such a great idea, and, and because of the building we're in, the restrictions here at uh, this uh, uh, building, uh, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, are so stringent. They, they hardly let you do anything without uh, huge meetings and, and thug-like guards carrying revolvers. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I, uh, th we have such a great idea now, and I'm, I'm just positive that they're not going to let us do it, that I'm going to tell it to you now. And, and if we ever get to do it, then it'll be exciting. Okay. We're right across the street here in New York from the Exxon building huge major industrial economic complex and and i guess we're, we we hate that don't we uh i don't know just pretend you hate it and uh, uh but what we're interested in really is they're building they have an enormous building right across the street what we're going to do is get a very high powered spotlight at night and we're going to train it on the exxon building and do shadow puppets i like that see now i think this is a great idea i like that uh and, yeah. and uh that uh, is only one, uh, that is a conservative idea, uh, next to some of the things that uh, you have done here. You have brought a zany in and creative enthusiasm to late night television, and it certainly has rewarded you. Well, thank you, sir. Your ratings are good, you're hot, and you well, have... I don't know about hot. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> say hot. Don't say hot in the studio, Phil. <laughs> you know... You, uh, it is also true that uh, you have, uh, you have the problem that, uh, you, sh you have a problem that you share with uh, Mario Cuomo and Edward Kennedy. No. Yeah. Uh, People always ask you the same question. The, the question, as you know, that they continue to ask Senator oh, Kennedy yeah, and yeah. the governor, 
is he going, are they going to run for president? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to ask you, are you going to replace Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show? No. No. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, David. There was a... You know, the money's real good, but I don't know if I could handle the domestic problems that seem to go with the... Uh, uh, no, you know, there was, there was a time when uh, uh, I just sort of stumbled into that uh, quite by accident. I, uh, about five or six years ago, uh, Johnny Carson was uh, negotiating a, a contract and there was discussion whether or not he will, will, would return. And I think at the time, the president of the network was Fred Silverman, and, and uh, because of that, there was uh, extra speculation going on. And uh, I was just lucky enough at that time to start uh, hosting the show, coincidentally. And so suddenly, uh, I'm living in a lean-to at this point in Laurel Canyon, and uh, in California. And I got my mail one day, and there were uh, clippings from newspapers listing me as a possible replacement for Johnny Carson, if in fact the uh, negotiations broke off and he went somewhere else. Right. And I just, uh, I hooted. This was, uh, to me, this was the best thing that ever happened to me because, uh, you know, heretofore I was literally just, you know, telling jokes to drunks. Uh, I, uh, being, uh, being a candidate uh, is flattering. That's, oh, that's sure. quite true. Yeah. And then obviously now you have the diplomatic problem of not appearing to be breathless for the job. That's going to be tough. It is the, as I don't have to tell you, it's the throne for all of all the talk shows, this oh, is absolutely. as big as you get. Well, I won't, I won't pursue it any further. Well, I, I, I don't think it's going to happen, uh, and I'll tell you why. I think that, uh, um, first of all, I don't think he's ever going to leave. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and secondly, I don't know that uh, the kind of show we're doing now is anything NBC is uh, moving uh, closer to a reasonable time in their lineup, you know? <laughs> uh, so I just, uh, the way things look now, I don't think if that job were to open up tomorrow that... Uh, I might be considered uh, as a, a second or third, but I don't think I would be their first choice. Well, not everyone would agree, but let me just review briefly who uh, David Letterman. Uh, you grew up in Indiana. Yeah, proud of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> no, no, wait a minute. You said that suspiciously. Well, like, uh, you, like you don't believe I'm well, proud of it. Well, first let me give this audience, uh, those of you who get up at 5.30 in the morning, we're going to have to send David to you on VCR. Uh, he, he, one of the truly hilarious, many hilarious running features of his program is the favorite pet... Stupid pet tricks. St stupid pet tricks. <laughs> Listen, this is what happens when you work with animals. David, I, if you'd have called me, I'd have told you. <laughs> Carolyn Baker, Carolyn! Uh-oh. Hi, Carolyn, how are you? Nice to see you. Now, you got yourself a dog here, don't you? Okay. What, what kind of an animal is this? He's an English bulldog. English bulldog, and his name Rock, is? Rocky. And, Rocky Rollins. And what exactly Rocky, is he? Rocky. Sorry, just say. What exactly is Rocky right. doing there, Carolyn? He's breathing. He has a difficult time. Uh -huh. Okay. And what is, what is his? <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely he disposition this animal chair. has. Hi, Rocky. How are you? All right. What is, what is Rocky going to do, Carolyn? Rocky's going to, well, Rocky. <laughs> he may have done it already. Rocky. Going to jump for his toy, pull it, and he then obviously I'm going to swing a little. Rock. Okay, he's going to you're going to jump for the toy, and you're going to. And, he, and he's going to pull it. Rock, right. Rocky, not yet. In oh a minute. Oh my. And then he's going to swing on his roof. Okay, go ahead, Carolyn and Rocky is okay. swinging on the toy. You ready, Rock? <laughs> he's jumping. That what was a jump. mild mannered right, animal. He one more time. You ready? I like how the you saliva see, sort of flies all over my suit. No. Okay. This is a very good idea, this uh. show. Whoever, whoever are the geniuses behind uh, th these ideas, you certainly have uh, taken us away from the desk and couch, uh, and ta you've, taken the, you've taken your camera outside. You've just taken it everywhere and annoyed many, many people. But you know what imp impresses me, too? You take a lot of risks with this kind of thing. I, mean, um. I assume you've got your own uh, stupid pet stories that... Did, does, it, do all, does all of this get on the air? 
Oh, yeah. We, we save uh, darn little, uh, if anything. Everything that we do pretty much ends on the, up on the air, yeah. The, uh, the, the pets usually uh, go pretty much as planned because these are actual dogs who have spent most of their life with, with the owners, and, and uh, that was, you know, that was the way Rocky is going to be uh, any time. Uh, probably so. Yeah. Um, we haven't had any real uh, peculiar experiences with the pets. We, you know, we've had them take a, you know... Sure. Um, <laughs> And uh, that sort of thing. But that's, you know, I don't think that really is a problem for anybody. I started to say that you're, an Indi you're a Hoosier. And uh, is it Broad Ripple High School? That's right, Broad Ripple High School. And also uh, Ball State. Did you, did you graduate? I graduated. Uh, that's not an I'm, offensive question. No, no, I, just, I know. Uh, I know. Uh, uh, no, I did. I have a degree from Ball State. That's the offensive part. No, no, no. <laughs> and... Uh, you're, there's nothing uh, necessarily unusual about what you did. You put everything in the car and came to Los Angeles and said, I'm going to take a swing at yeah, this. Yeah. I'm not sure you were altogether convinced that you could do stand-up, when, even when you went to L.A., were you? No, when I started out, when I was in college, I, I wanted to be you, pretty much. This was... Uh, uh, well, certainly this audience understands that. <laughs> uh, I wanted to be a, uh, a broadcaster. I wanted to work at uh, WLW in Cincinnati. Uh, it w it's a clear channel, 50,000 watt radio station, and it used, used, used to boom into Indianapolis, and uh, uh, they produced a lot of really good broadcasting talent in that area, and that's what I wanted to do, was be a, a disc jockey at a radio station like that. And uh, I went to college and ended up doing uh, television, and after about five years, got, uh, got very tired of it because I wasn't getting anywhere. I couldn't get a, a really good job. You know, I was working in Indianapolis, and, I, and nobody else was interested in hiring me, so I, uh, I just said, well, let's try something else. And uh, I think you you came here and got an opportunity to do a stand-up at the comedy. That's I, right. L.A. Yeah, I, I originally went to Los Angeles as a, uh, a writer. It's, it's more palatable to tell your family that you're going to be a writer than it is to tell them that you're going to do stand-up comedy. You know, they think you're looking for circus work or something yes. that way. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, but the, like within the, the first week I was there, I started doing uh, stand-up comedy at the comedy store. And it was horrible experience, just terrible. But you, you, didn't, you didn't bomb at the place. You, by my understanding is you didn't knock him dead, but you weren't a flop. Isn't that so? Wouldn't um, I, I wasn't a flop in that I left the stage uh, in a conscious state. Uh -huh. uh, but there was not what you'd call laughter coming from the audience. Uh, it was very uh, um, traumatizing. I'd never done it before. Uh, the the uh, comedy store is, uh, is dark. It's cavernous. Uh, not cavernous, but dark like a cave. Everything's black, and they train this intense light on you, white light, and I'd never experienced anything like it. And for seven or eight minutes, I did my little routine, and uh, people, you know, continued to order their drinks, and I went home later. But uh, I kept doing it, and it got a little easier and a little easier. But I really, from what I understand, you really were terrified. And oh, that's sure. a very honest thing to say. It is a mystery to, perhaps, to even myself, who knows what it's like to be scared, as to how you can be terrified and funny too, and 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 if, you know, and why do so many people do this? And more than more importantly, do it well. Does it help to be scared? Well, I was talking to someone in the elevator, and they said, "Are you scared?" And I said, "Sure, I'm scared. I think anybody, any reasonable person, is scared." Uh, uh, and I I think that my theory on this is people who go into stand-up comedy either got uh, too much reinforcement as a child or not enough. So they're always seeking to duplicate that via the stage. Mm -hmm. they're, they're looking to get as much as they got as a kid, or they're looking to get what they didn't get as a kid. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that holds uh, water or not, but I, I, you know, I thought that up for your show, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does hold water. I want to show you uh, David Letterman at work in Indianapolis. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, I can have my check now. I'll uh, just be this leaving. Would, I believe this is this this is uh, more than a decade ago. Oh no! Uh, you should also know, you should also know that this uh, young man was not approved by the United States uh, Meteorological Society. That's right. Roll tape. Uh, Indiana at one time yesterday. Oh yeah. Flash flood and rain, but all of that seems of little importance once you take a look at the cloud cover photograph made earlier of the United States today. And I think you'll see that once again we've fallen to the prey of political dirty dealings. And right now you can see what I'm talking about. The higher ups have removed the border between Indiana and Ohio, making it one giant state. Personally, I'm against it. Now that is about 12, 13 years old. So Looked like were... one of the monkeys, didn't I? <laughs> 
It's, yes, from Liverpool, it's the Dave Clark Five. Thank you. Well, that wasn't Good a steady Lord. job, was it? That was not a steady job. It was, I had it, you know, it was interesting. I had that job, at the, uh, I got it as a, a summer vacation relief announcer. And uh, every, every year they'd look for, uh, they'd have auditions to replace me. And I, and I went through five years of watching two or three times a week them audition my replacement. And they, <laughs> believe it or not, they never found anybody who was even that good. Uh, we are in New York City with the host of Late Night, David Letterman. Oh and we'll be back God. in a moment. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. How did you get lucky enough to get a second chance after you failed during daytime? Well, that's a good question. I, uh, I was, believe me, I was lucky to get the first chance. And uh, uh, you're referring to, I had a morning show that was on for, uh, I don't know, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe more than that. Uh, I don't know. I really thought when that went off the air, uh, I knew I had to get to the back of the line. And I just assumed that uh, it would be uh, a long, long time before I came back on American television, at any rate. And... Um, <laughs> It, it was just one of those things that worked out where uh, uh, NBC found themselves in a position that uh, they felt like they might be making a change, and they said, well, let's try this uh, kid one more time. Also, at that period of time, I think there was a transition in the uh, administration at NBC. Uh, some people left, some other people came in. And I, again, I was quite lucky. You, you, you phrased that uh, perfectly. Yes, ma'am. Are you married? Well, I, said, I got a girl for you. No. <laughs> See, uh, no, you know, that's, uh, uh, I, I'm pleased by that notion. Uh, and, and is she here? Can you get her? Or is she, um, no, I'm, I'm not married, but uh, I've been with the, uh, the same girl for a, uh, a long period of time. And uh, when, when I get married, it will probably, I mean, it will be. It, it will be to this, this one person. Uh, but that doesn't mean we still can't have a look at your daughter. No, no. <laughs> This is only a joke, and, and, and yes, just sir. barely a joke. Are you, are you good friends with Paul Schaefer off the air? Yes, I am. I, I like Paul quite well. He's a, a very interesting man, very talented musician, and uh, I consider him to be a friend of mine, yeah. yeah. And now that you're just such a big hit at late night, do you think NBC will put you back at primetime? Oh, <laughs> no, no, I don't, uh, I don't see that happening, no, sir. Yes, I don't know what I would do in primetime television. Did you know Phil before you came to New York, before you started this whole countdown? Were you friendly? Uh, I knew Phil. Yes, I did know him. We met uh, twice, and I don't know that he, he's We weren't friendly. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, no, I met him, I met him twice. Uh, once at a... Uh, we worked for the same company. He was, I believe, in Dayton, and I was in Indianapolis working for the same broadcasting chain. And I met him in Indianapolis, and then uh, I talked to him once on the phone when I had a radio show years ago. Did you know him before you came to New York? <laughs> That's not what he said. Do you like Howard Stern? Yeah, I think Howard is, uh, is, is uh, inventive. I think he's, uh, uh, he's, he's what, what uh, radio ought to be. He's doing some things that uh, I think are very interesting. Yeah, I have a lot of, a lot of regard and uh, respect for Howard. How badly do you respond physically on the air when you know this interview is going nowhere and probably never will? Are you trying to tell me something, Phil, about... <laughs> Uh, I just want to go home. I, I, want to, uh, I want to adjourn the audience and say, I'm sorry, it, it's my fault. There'll be a, a small cash reward for you in the mail. Uh, and I just want to call it off and go home. I, I feel like, you know, some days it's going to happen, other days it's not. Uh, uh, I know that's the wrong attitude. If you see it go, go down the drain, you're supposed to jump on there and uh, do everything you can to, to beat life back into it. But I, I get so embarrassed, I just think, let's just come back tomorrow and try it another day. Mr. Letterman, you're a very good-looking guy. Yeah. Uh, and you look terrific in person. My question is... Let me take my gum out of my mouth. <laughs> my question is, how do you feel being back-to-back -back with Johnny Carson? Do you feel that it has helped you or that you made it on your own? Well, first of all, let's talk about your hat, all right? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, I, uh... <laughs> it, how, how much was the hat? Um, about $22. All right. It's very nice. You look very nice, ma'am. Uh, 
No, it's a, you, sure, I would rather be on uh, after Johnny Carson than, than almost anybody in television. I think that's a, you know, this man's uh, legendary. He's done it successfully for 20, 23, 20, 24 years or whatever. Yeah, that, if you got to be on after somebody, that, that would be my first choice. Yes. David, I watch your show a lot, and I was wondering, what motivates you to go out and ask people what they're carrying in their, in their pockets or in their yes. suitcases or in their bags? Yeah, I wondered well, that. Well, we're always, we're always looking for uh, different things to do with uh, the camera on the streets of New York. And uh, what, what the man is referring to is something called, uh, for lack of a better name, uh, Mr. Curious. And we just, we just go out, we hide the camera in the, in the truck, and I just stop people, and I ask to look through their personal belongings. <laughs> and uh, and uh, they're wonderful. They'll, they'll pretty much show you anything you ask to be shown. David, I'd like to know if you've ever studied acting and if we will see you in any films any time in the future. No, I've never studied acting. I've done a little of it to know that it's something I'm, I'm no good at it. And, uh, and I probably, I, I, I flatter myself that I would like to try it someday, but I don't, I, realistically, I don't know that it would happen. Yes. People aren't that stupid. Yes, Mr. Letterman? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to know what kind of schedule you're on. I understand you're on at late night, 1 o'clock about. Yes, ma'am. Does your taping time start before that or is it a live show yeah it, well we consider it to be a live show we, we never stop the tape I think in three years we've stopped it twice uh, so we treat it as it's a live show we tape it at 5 30 in the evening um, I come in around 11 and stay till about 8 and like that uh, mr. Letterman uh, I don't know if you uh, will answer a personal question for me all right I understand you would uh, your last name Letterman, wait, wait a minute where do you get the <laughs> <laughs> well, first of, uh, first of all, your last name really strikes me. I was wondering if it had anything to do with the uh, Postal Service in your hometown. <laughs> uh, no, no. I, you know, it's... Uh, uh... <laughs> do you... You're not a writer, right? No. no. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I don't know. It's the, the last name I was born with, and uh, I don't know if there's any connection. Uh, you mean maybe there's a lawsuit in this for me? I don't know. Um, I was just wondering how much input do you have in the show as far as writing it or is a lot of it ad lib or? Uh, we have a, a staff of writers. We've been really lucky since the show's been on. We've had really bright writers uh, and uh, the, the head writer for the first year on the show was the, the woman I spoke of to you, ma'am, about the getting married to. Uh, <laughs> and uh, her name is Meryl Marco and she's on doing other things right now. And the, the writers do the majority of of the ideas, coming up with things, and the, the scripted pieces. She obviously has made a very important professional contribution to the success of the launching of Late Night. Oh, absolutely. The, and so I will assume that her leave-taking from the show probably had more to do with... Uh, for, was, is it okay, how's it, what's it like working with the woman you live with? Well, it's, uh, it's a day-long fist fight. Uh, and that and that's the reason that uh, that she went on to other things it just uh, it got to be you know you'd get up in the morning and you'd go at it you'd all through the day you would come home at night you'd go at it and you go to bed now she doesn't see the tape she doesn't see the tape until it's on the air right do you come home and say we died oh sure you do yeah 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 absolutely and so what if she gets another room then or she uh, she gives you space for the rest of the evening well, aren't you? yeah oh yeah she's very understanding about it when she was head writing we she would see it taped so she knew what i was talking about and when she left the show now she's at arm's length from it so it's it's much better now yes sir i was in indiana when you were yes sir you finally got back to new york you were very legitimately funny then oh thank I you watched yeah. all your weather uh, do you want to syndicate those tapes no 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 no, no. i don't you, think so nice nice to see you what were you doing in indiana Oh, yeah, going, yeah. Going yeah. I have a question. I watch the NBC News. When are you having Marv Albert on again? Uh, Marv comes on. Marv is the, uh, uh, does a lot of sportscasting for NBC and a local uh, sportscaster here at Channel 4 in New York and is terrific. And he comes on, I guess, roughly once every six weeks with uh, videotapes that he's compiled. Uh, he's a great guy and a terrific uh, broadcaster. Not only do you do crazy things, but I watched the other day you had your guests in a dentist chair speaking as if they were had helium coming oh, out yeah, of their mouth. Yeah. Does anyone object to doing this kind of thing? Uh, yeah, the guest uh, that you're talking about, I believe, was uh, Jane Pauley, and she was not... She had a good time with it, though. She I was think. not keen about doing it. <laughs> the, the premise of this show was uh, we let the audience vote uh, what, what elements they wanted to see on the program, and, and one of the choices was, would you like to hear the guests speak normally, or would you like to hear them speak as if they had been inhaling helium? And uh, the, the, surprisingly enough, the audience wanted to hear how they would sound. Uh, in now, what about the, the fan mail? Is that real? Because it's crazy. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, 
it sounds like letters someone wouldn't actually sit down and write. No, I know, but that's the nature of our audience, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those are actual letters. They come uh, come in and we answer our mail every Thursday night. Yeah, I must say that they they are making an attempt to write something that they think will get on the air. Uh, so it's a little different from normal run-of-the-mill uh, show response mail. Uh, you said that you don't think NBC would consider you for the Johnny Carson show. If they yeah. did consider you for the Johnny Carson show, would you take the job? Oh, geez, I don't know. This uh, the uh, the the show I have right now has been so much work and. Uh, really a lot harder than I thought it was going to be and and we're doing pretty well now and so I sort of like the way the setup is now see if you take over for Johnny Carson people who are just coming to this country who whom have never seen the show they're getting off boats and planes here in New York they're going to have an opinion they've never seen it before but all of a sudden they, oh he's not as good as Johnny was so um, what and you you're going to have uh, NBC vice presidents coming out of the woodwork, uh, which is, believe me, where they come out of. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if I would really want all that pressure. What are your feelings about Grace Jones? Uh, I know very little about Grace. She's been on the show a couple of times, and she, uh, uh, that's, she's an interesting woman, very, very interesting woman. Very interesting. How's your dog, Bob? Bob is, uh, uh, Bob is good. Bob and I are, uh, he's in the office upstairs uh, today, and he's uh, very good. Thank you for asking. Uh, uh, I'll tell him you did. How many <laughs> miles do you run a day, where and what time? Uh, <laughs> sounds like we have a potential sniper here, Phil. I, <laughs> uh, about four and a half, and uh, just through my neighborhood, and uh, it was, I got up and did it this morning. It was a lot nice. You want um, do you pick the people uh, personally that you have on your show? And if you don't, has there anyone has anyone been on there that uh, you didn't particularly care for? Oh, um, not really. Not re we've had a few, you know, here and there that didn't turn out to. Uh, uh, we have a, 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 a group of people who's, who make the decisions for the, the guests and so forth, and and I can have as much input as I want into it or or not, you know. But I, I try to leave it up up to those people because they, you know, they know what they're doing. Do you have a wardrobe consultant, or do you put your clothing together? Uh, <laughs> what, what moves you to ask the question? I suppose the formality of his clothing and the brightness yeah, of his colors. Yeah, I know. Colors. It's, I, uh, you're, you're right. I have trouble there. I have a, uh, two very nice people who, who uh, help me with the clothing and they pick it out and they make sure that it looks nice and so forth. But the real problem is me. I just don't know what you ought to be wearing. You know, I just, you look great. See, I think, I think you look great and even this guy looks okay, but, but, uh, -huh. uh I just, I, uh... <laughs> Would you kindly stand, sir? Stand so they can see you in the back. Yeah. Okay. And we'll be back in just a moment. Family Feud, 7.30 tonight on Channel 4. Uh, I want to show you a picture. I'm not sure of the year. This is difficult. It's going to be difficult for you to pick oh out. Oh, my God. David Letterman. Oh, uh, my God. Would you be able to guess which one? Uh... Oh, my God. Now, what's not to love here? Oh. Huh? Next, let me see a close-up. Look at this. That is your senior year book picture, and the year was? Yeah. 1965. I look like somebody that you'd later find out was John Hinckley's best friend or something. Like that. <laughs> Gee, many. Oh, my God. Yeah, they used to go downtown together and cause trouble. In the continuing effort uh, of our show to speak to uh, issues about which I know you care very deeply, and uh, going straight at the question of what was... David Letterman, really like, I'm pleased to produ uh, introduce your former director of productions from Broad Ripple High School. Here's Gene Poston. Come on in here, Gene. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Gene. Okay. Hi, Hi, Dave. My God. Now, you, you wonder if this is true, oh, right? God. Is this? Yeah. You think this is a gag? Gene, what does this mean, director of production? You obviously were the drama coach. Or, or uh, in musical drama and uh, Ripple's Axe, which David was in in 1963, 
and 1965, right? Right. Uh, Gene. <laughs> Gene. Look at how comfortable he is. This is how much he loves this. Gene, now, come on. I know it flatters you to say I knew all along, but did you, did, did, could you see, was there anything to work with here in 1964? <laughs> Nothing to work with now, Phil. <laughs> I would have to say, to be honest, Phil, I think there were people on the staff that, yes, recognized in Dave at the time that there was a talent there. I don't think that the school necessarily fostered it. I think his peers, as his peers today, appreciate David and what David does. Uh, David uh, was one of those young men that was always on the verge of getting into trouble, but never did really fall over the edge, you know? And uh, that's appreciated, you know, from a student like that. But he, he didn't have starring parts, did he, or did he? Huh? Well, not starring parts. At least they weren't written that way. But can you believe that David would take them and yeah. before you would know it? In fact, in one show, I think it was called First Family Calamity, was it, Dave? Gee, I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess... <laughs> I guess the uh, smart thing to do here is play along. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, Gene, I think that was the yeah, name of the show. Yes, that's the name of the show. As I recall, uh, that's uh, pretty much it, sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, a very small <laughs> part, but then Dave makes a big part out of he it. He walked okay? on stage and then... Uh, to, uh, was he, he was not a straight-A student, I don't think, Mr. Post. Oh, do you have the transcript here, Phil? Uh, <laughs> Good Lord. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what we do have. This is hard to believe. You were... David, you were in high school, you were a hall monitor. <laughs> hall monitor? You know what we used to call those people? What? Finks. Uh, so you would, is that so, Mr. No, no, wait a minute. I take exception with this, uh, this woman claiming that I was a fink, the hall monitor. <laughs> Uh, at least in Broderville, perhaps uh, Gene here can back me up on this, but these were the, the people. Uh, <laughs> we, we took these positions just to get out of any organized classroom activity. We could go sit in a darkened hallway and doze or do whatever. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't think, uh, ma'am. No, sir. It was just a, you know, a short vacation. <laughs> this, uh, 1965, was reasonably tranquil time for America. I mean, we... It's true, we had seen our share of pain, but uh, it was closer to the 50s, certainly, than it was to the later 60s. And I think uh, David apparently then demonstrated some talent in terms of attracting attention when he walked on the stage, even though his part didn't necessarily. Of course. Uh, of course. And you're retired now. I don't think you're at Broadway. That's correct. Uh -huh. uh, it's different now, is it not, uh, Mr. Poston? I mean, the, the high school experience for everybody is, we're different planets today, isn't that so? I, th yeah, well, in a way we are. I, I think um, uh, if David had been in school today with the talent that was demonstrated when he was in school uh, in the 60s, would be more recognized. You think so? I, I think so, from the standpoint that there is, even though we think that the schools are going back to basics, at Broad Ripple High School in particular, there is a Center for Humanities and a Center for the Performing Arts. Mm -hmm. And there's a great deal of emphasis placed upon that in trying to recognize talent in young people and fostering that talent. And I think that's encouraging in today's education. Any, any talk of naming a wing after me, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, Dave. Hold on. Not yet. Yes. I saw a hand there. I'll move over there in just a moment. If you joined us late, this good-looking... Uh, couple on stage <laughs> includes not only uh, David Letterman but the man who was his former director of productions uh, that's a very august title now this this man uh, w was responsible for most of the the musical productions that took place at the high school and this was a, a real uh, uh, a, a proud unit for for the the high school it was one one thing that they always pointed to with pride was this man's uh, uh, choirs and uh, musical productions and so on and so forth and I must say that I was was never as a, a singer uh, in any of them. Uh, I, was, I was on, uh, in, in, in one, I think, as a stooge. I had a, a stooge role, and in, uh, one name came to mind when they saw the role in the script, and so I got it. Uh, but, but for me to be associated with this man, he's, he's flattering me now, because I, I didn't have the great musical... Uh, the idea for your comedy and whatever you were going to do with your life had to have had some, uh, w w I'm not sure it was born in these uh, ripples or whatever they were called, 
But you must have found that you enjoyed this. Oh, I, yeah, I always wanted to be a part of it. It was, you know, it was, it was the, uh, one of the elite groups of the school, sure. So, and, and some of my friends were in them, and I always thought, what, what am I? You know, I'm just kind of a blotter here in society. And uh, so I, I wanted to be a part of them, but I can remember being in a couple of music classes and being, you know, 86 early on. Uh, and, and then kind of, uh, you know, later I would weasel my way back into one of the shows in, in some capacity, yeah. I want to know how you honestly felt when you first heard that you had to share your home here at 30 Rock with Phil. Well, we were very excited. We, uh, first of all, uh, we, had, we had been here about uh, two and a half years when we heard the news that Phil was coming, and, and right away we thought, well, this, there's somebody else we can annoy. We can go down and bother, <laughs> we can go down and bother Phil. Uh, and uh, no, it was, it was quite exciting. Everybody in the building, uh, you, you talk to pages, you talk to technicians. It was a, a real, uh, you know, people, any kind of new infusion of uh, energy is, is very welcome in this uh, particular, in this business, I guess. You seem to have such control over your guests, more or less, as far as um, questioning them and more or less intimidating them. Have you ever had a guest on your show that you felt was hard to question and intimidated you in turn? Yeah, I do. I get, in, I get intimidated real easily uh, by, by people. Uh, I don't, none of the names come to mind right off the top of my head, but uh, I remember uh, our second or third show we had Andy Rooney on from uh, 60 Minutes. And uh, I'd always been a, a great admirer of Andy Rooney's, and uh, it, to the extent that I would uh, get copies of videotape copies of television programs he had put together, because I thought he was doing some terrific work in the uh, line of uh, documentaries. And so we had him on, and uh, he intimidated me, and uh, it just went from bad to worse, and it got ugly and just stupid after that. Uh, but that's one example. But it happens all the time, and I'm just sick about it. I don't. Yes, Dave. Especially with Dr. Ruth. I mean, you go through about five different shades of red. What is the problem? <laughs> well, Doc, the... uh, Dr. Ruth Westheimer is a, a woman who has a radio show. People call in and ask her very explicit problems about sex. And, and she answers them very explicitly. And she comes on our show. And, and this woman will say anything. Uh, and uh, she, she couldn't be a sweeter person, couldn't be a nicer person. But there, uh, I can't even begin to, uh, I don't want to say what she says, but it takes, <laughs> it gives one pause for thought, certainly. You must, I, I, you better be watching this program called Late Night with oh, David sure, Letterman. I'm sure he's Post. watching. <laughs> yes. Uh, and there must be some uh, pride in, uh, we have to wonder how many other people in your work, men and women who are working very hard in education around the country, now, with uh, television, cable, and all the opportunities for talent to be expressed, might, I wonder if they're looking more enthusiastically than perhaps you were moved to look because of the nature of the world in 65 toward future Letterman's and uh, I talent. think they are, Phil. I really do. I, th I think educators are looking uh, at future Letterman's. Uh, now, the next question is, will those future Letterman's necessarily... Will that talent reflect itself at that time in their lives? I don't know, I'm asking. I'm not sure there's one answer to this. Do you know what I mean? I had a f he didn't jump out of a cake uh, in the sense of calling attention to himself in your high school. And yet it's clear he's got, he had a talent which is very unique and probably was not necessarily expressing itself before you at good old Broad Ripple High. No, I don't, I don't think that we actually can ascertain and uh, know that this talent is going to develop. I think uh, his family knew of David's cleverness. His friends did, and some on the staff did, uh, because he was always thinking. He was always ahead of things. Um, Except, of course, in chemistry. Well, <laughs> you know, he, he never did fail a subject. Oh, David no, was no. not... Da it, it was not really uh, unusual from the standpoint he did enough. The grades were not always indicative of what he got out of the classwork. It's true. Kind of a mediocre, bland, uh, academic student. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Uh, right. yeah. That's right. uh, we'll, we'll be back. We'll be back with Gene Poston and David Letterman in a moment. So, Gene, what a nice to see you. How are you? There he was. Uh, in 1965, here's the man who has developed an audience as no other person has in, in late night. This is an amazing uh, success story, and uh, he's going to be thrilled again, as I give you proudly, his fraternity brother from Sigma Chi <laughs> at Ball State.
Here is Jeff Lewis. Come on in here, Jeff. Say hello to your old buddy. Oh, no. <laughs> How are you, buddy? What the hell's going on? I'm not telling you. Oh, uh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Jeff. Now, do I win something? Is that the deal? You got a mobile Je home in it for Jeff. me? Was he popular with girls? Was it one steady girl? Did he have a lot of girlfriends? Did he get home on time at night? Give us the whole picture. Come Gee, on. Gee, that's a lot. Uh, no, he was not popular with girls. Uh, he had one steady girlfriend, and he wasn't popular with her. Um, he, oh, Jeff. I Good old Jeff hasn't changed, has he? I helped him, uh, I helped him get home late uh, past the hours many times, so he didn't get home on time. Yeah. Um, what else? Is this one of those special 90-minute shows, I Phil? Feel like, <laughs> I feel like Ralph Edwards. Um, were you, how about you? Uh, did you think this chap was going to uh, hit it like this? No doubt about it. You really did think so? Without question. No kidding. No. Boy, you're the kind of buddy to have. You know, he, he was the kind of buddy to have in college. This man uh, was the, the uh, Mr. Campus. This man was president of... Uh, Anything we had, he was president of. Uh, he was a, a very astute politician and uh, pursued a career in politics. This was, this was your blue chip, Mr. Big Man on campus. So this was a great friend Here's to have. Here's your money, Dave. <laughs> uh, yeah, he pretty much, you pretty much ran things in Muncie. Yeah. Well, what there is to run well, there, yeah. That's why it was a short career. <laughs> uh, Jeff, was it an Animal House thing or was it? Uh, At times. It was. Yes. At times even funnier. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I was wondering, has anyone ever become abusively angry after you make a fool out of them on TV? Well, you know, I've, I've been accused of making uh, uh, fools of people, and it's certainly never my intention to do that. And so, some people have uh, been angered, yeah. But, uh, and I always feel very badly because uh, it's an entertainment show and we're, we're certainly not trying to hurt people's uh, feelings, unlike this broadcast. <laughs> um, do, you, do you go to the, re does he go to reunions at Ball State? Uh, has appeared at a couple of homecomings, one in particular, I know. Yeah, that's right. I was... Uh... And that was under considerable duress, and that caused a real, uh, real concern among certain members of the uh, administration that he was going to get up on stage and make fun of them. Can oh, imagine yeah. that? Uh, yeah. Oh, we certainly don't want that to happen. No. Uh, and... Yeah. I feel... <laughs> no, go ahead. Come on, Phil. Uh, could you tell me where you, your staff came up with uh, Mr. Bud Melman? Where did they find that man? <laughs> Uh, he, Larry is, is an actor. He is, uh, uh, I will say, in his mid-60s and began acting full-time uh, a couple of years ago. A uh, very interesting man, very interesting life, and uh, he had appeared in some student films uh, done at NYU, and some of our writers had used him in one of those, and, and through that connection, we hired him for our show. Yeah. I want to know if they've kept in touch uh, over the years, or if they've just seen each other now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time we've seen each other in, I would guess, two years. But, yeah. Two yeah. years. I would think, wouldn't you? A year and a half. Year and a half yeah. I ran into you on the street when you were uh, nursing Bob one afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Are you sitting there thinking of ways to get even with Phil for this? No, no, I'm not. I, I, uh, he already has. Uh, no, yes. that's not quite what I'm thinking. Are you planning on doing a book at some point? Uh, I see no point in that. I, you know, I don't, I'm not sure I would even read that book, so. <laughs> You have a special on Saturday on oh, that's right. NBC. You better, that's right. you better do your, home, or your work here. What? This is, uh, will be our third anniversary program, and believe me, no one is more surprised than I that we made it to, to three years, and it will be uh, 11.30 uh, in the Saturday Night Live time slot this uh, Saturday, and uh, we're very happy with the show, and it will be a compilation of things that we've done over the, the last uh, three years, and uh, I think it'll be a pretty good broadcast. Yes, ma'am. Did he ever think of having your space between your teeth fixed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that has been a uh, Jeff has wondered that too for a long time, haven't you, Jeff? I'm not going to tell. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I was telling a, a woman over here earlier. I, you know, you grow up and you have, you you're just you, and you don't realize things about you until somebody else points them out. And uh, one day, this was in Los Angeles. I was up for a television show that NBC was doing, and they were going to hire me with the provision that I had my teeth fixed. And I said. Fixed? What are, what are they talking about? <laughs> and I went home and I looked in the mirror and from that point on I've been, uh, I realized immediately what they were talking about and... Uh, Character, right? Well, I don't know about that, but, but thank you for that. But it, uh, no, I haven't considered having them changed. Yes. Dave. What? Yeah, wait, wait a minute, just, just get, let the lady make her point. Dave, if Dave. you need a very good dentist, 
You got the wrong son. <laughs> and we'll get your son's name. And, and we'll, I won't forget. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Thank you very much. How you doing? Now what, how does that happen? Gene Poston, uh, retired former director of productions, Broad Ripple High School, and Jeffrey Lewis, Sigma Chi. What's not to love about these two? Thank you both for making this uh, more fun for us. Uh, uh, in Brooklyn, a space between the teeth is called... Space between the teeth, they call it passionate teeth. I got one. Oh, you yeah, have one, too. <laughs> you look, yours looks great. I'd like to know what the point of this was. Are we here to boost your ratings? Oh, that's what I want to know, too. That's a very good question. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. We, uh, uh, Phil was kind enough to ask, and I was certainly happy to, to oblige. Yes. David, I'm curious to know what you do for re relaxation, uh, tension. I, I do a lot of reading, do a lot of running, and uh, that's pretty much it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it seems as if it's been about 16 years since you've graduated and so forth. Is your family proud of you? Are you proud of yourself? Services uh, provided and promotional fees paid by the following. The Drake, a landmark hotel in the heart of Manhattan. For reservations outside of New York State, call 800-D-R-A-K-E-N-Y. In New York State, call 212-421-0900. With a life expectancy of 16.5 years, this is the space vehicle that could transport you into the 21st century. For fine cutlery made according to professional standards, see the new Harvard Cutlery Collection at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. How do you get to your show? Do you have your own limousine? Uh, no, I drive. <laughs> I know you join me in thanking all our guests and wishing David Letterman continued success on Late Night. Thank you very David much, Bill. Thanks, Gene. Nice to see you again. Appreciate it.